Hey friends, DM Khan here. Thank you for stopping by the channel. So in this episode, we're going to talk about the rhythm section and horns and how we kind of mix that into the Kerrigan reggae drummer's drum tracks. So basically, Kerrigan sent me multi-tracks in an awesome rub-a-dub style, and I made a rhythm around it. And John Roy laid down some sax, and Alexis Heinz laid down some trumpet and trombone. So we're going to show how do we mix that together with those awesome drums. And then at the end of the video, I'm going to show you a sneak peek for the next episode, which is Rafi's Wicked Vocals. So let's get started, shall we? So I think we should start off with just listening to the horns. So here is a four part thing from the sax. And this is from uh, and this is from John Roy. So what do we have here? We have three layers of tenor sax and one layer of baritone. And my thought process here is um, just pan them a little bit, starting kind of a little off center left, then the next one a little more left, the next one even more left, and then the, bar the baritone on the right. So I'll kind of play that horn line again and I'll just add them as we go along. And then, and then, and then. So such tight playing. You notice that there's no processing on any of these tracks. Um, all I've really done is I've bust them together and I've got the same plugin that I used on the drums and we'll pull up a meter. So let's let's turn this off and, and kind of listen again. And then I'll add the processing. So all I really did there was um, I just added some treble and I added some 4.8K. So I added four or five, four and a half dB of 12K and that's a shelf. And then I added four dB of 4.8K and I also added some 220. So I added some thickness, some upper mids. And I mean, right away you can hear it get brighter when I turn this on. So I'll turn it off and on. You can really hear that kind of airiness without. So I literally just panned and volume. So you can tell this sort of lead tenor is the loudest thing compared to that uh, harmony. So if I mute that one. See, they're quieter. I wanted that main one to be louder and then have the other two lower. And you'll see why when I start adding the other horns. And there's also some reverb on there. I added this um, Lustrous Plates reverb. So if I take that off. And the other reverb. very dry. Here's just with the luscious plates. See, it doesn't have too long of a decay. But then if I add my spring reverb, so that's John Roy's uh, amazing baritone and tenor sax. So let's go on to Alexis Heinz trombone. So you can kind of 
here, I'll turn off the, um, it's a little bit cloudy and kind of muddy sounding. Like it's an awesome harmony. And if I add back the tenor, and turn the processing back on that, adding that brightness really brings it up. So that's the um, the trombone, but the trumpet sounds really, really good. Here, I'll turn off the processing. So already, immediately, it's that pokey kind of, um, it's that pokey kind of trumpet sound, right? That... So I'm using the the tenor kind of as like the the body of the sound and the um, the trombone to kind of just add to that mid range and then the trumpet is is up top. So let's listen to them all together. This is without processing, processing. and with. So let's watch the meter when we do this with the plug-in off. This is a nice bit of presence in the 2K area. This just brings up the brightness. And it really helps it sit in the track, like if I unmute everything. Turn off the bus processing. processing. It gets kind of lost in the mix. Cuts through. There's also some cool other stabs that they did. So yeah, the horns, I mean, oh, I didn't have the, the lead tenor in there. Just amazing. Um, I mean, I, honestly, I was lucky. The guys that I asked to do this, they're professionals, and they I didn't even have to EQ them individually to make them stand out. There's just, there's like 10 layers of horns. So all I did was pan them so that there was a nice, you know, s spread of horns and kind of picked from each instrument i picked one loud one and then two quieter ones so um except for the trumpet because the the trumpet i really wanted to be present so let's listen with without the trumpet and everything else on just those stabs see it's like it's kind of missing that top end so here it is with the trumpet added so I hope you guys get the idea of what I'm trying to do here. I kind of have the trumpet laying up here and then sort of the um, the tenor taking up and the, the baritone as well, taking up the lower and then the, um, the trombone kind of in the middle there. So yeah, that's the horns. I mean, honestly, I kind of wish that they weren't recorded so well that that way I could kind of go into EQ and compression, but these didn't really need it. I just put them, bust them all together to one track and then added a little bit of brightness. That's really all that they needed. Um, so anyways, let's go on to the bass. So here's what the bass sounds like. This is straight DI into my LA6, LA610. And I mean, to my ear, it's a little bit mid-rangey. Um, kind of wall, wall, wall. You know what I mean? It does it. Like if we look at the the meter here, it's hard to say. But like in the low mids here, there's just too much. I I don't know if mud is the right word, but in 
anyways, I started with the, the Neve console N by Brainworks. I took out 5 dB of 800 hertz. I cut almost 3 dB of 380 hertz. And I took 1 dB of a shelf from 1K all the way down. I have a gate on here. Not really sure why. No compression or anything. So that's without it. It my ears kind of do. I tried to uh, level match this as much as I could. It seems a little louder when I turn the plug in on, but it's really not. It's just it's gotten rid of the mid range crap and it brought up. You know, I I raised the volume. See here i did some cuts on the eq but then the output i raised almost 3 db so now you're hearing the good stuff with a little bit of the mids scooped out um, the next plugin that i used was just a more cuts basically so i took out 6 db at 110 and a big cut at 275, and then I rolled off the very lows. So this is actually a little bit quieter. That's okay. So it got a little quieter. And then I, I did some more cuts here. I did an extreme cut at, what is this? Like 30 hertz. Here's without. And I did a, a kind of a weird cut at 100. I'm sure this was like at the point where I was here. Let's listen to drum and, and bass because I'm sure I made these moves be, to kind of sculpt, give room for the kick, but kind of cut out from the bass. So it's off. Now it's on. It just solidified by cutting those super sub lows and by doing these kind of more mid-range cuts and more where the kick lives it just allowed it to be more solid and then here's the millennia i basically just boosted the low end again at 34 hertz it just added a little bit of that sub back in um, I cut it too much maybe here, and so I just added a little bit more. So let's quickly kind of A, B, no plugins. There's nothing wrong with that tone, but like it's not as tight or as deep or as rich when I turn these on. That's just like solid sounding. Versus that's kind of kind of like there's too much lower mids. Yeah, I I don't know how else to describe it other than like I'm just trying to tighten and sweeten and deepen the kick without it being like too distorted or kind of farty sounding. Okay, so that's that's that. Now let's talk about the good this talk box guitar so here's what it was without plugins so you saw in the video probably last video it's my talk box and it's I'm not really using it how I feel like the guys in the Roots Radix would use it. It doesn't quite have that sound, so I added an, another filter here, which sweeps around, and it kind of accentu accentuates that sort of filtered sound. Uh, for those that know, no. Um, but that kind of enhanced it, so here's without it. And with then I added some compression 
Because there's a lot of l quiet spots, and I wanted the, to raise the quiet spots and turn the loud stuff down. So that's what this compressor is doing. I, you could have used any compressor for it. And then um, what did I do here? I just added some 3.2K. Um, I also added some saturation here. So let's turn this one off. With it on. It kind of gets it a little bit more pokey sounding and a little bit dirtier sounding. And then I added Pan Man to kind of move it around in the stereo field. And then I added some reverb, another lustrous plates. Let's listen to that in the context of the mix. So it kind of moves around and sounds cool and like really filtered. So let's talk about the pluck guitar. I literally didn't process this. So I think actually I, I, I lied. I must have done a bounce in place on this one because obviously I use, actually no, I used the real amp on this. Um, so I don't know if I did some processing on this, then I must have uh, baked it in. So there's not much I can talk about it. It's obviously panned to the left with a little bit of reverb. Uh, here's the guitar. So I know I did a lot of work on this. Um, here's without. So to me, it sounds a little bit weak. It kind of sounds a little bit harsh. Like, I know it's supposed to be crunchy and everything, and it is, but this is my real amp, and I find that when I work with the real amp, it's actually harder than the plug-in. Um, so... That's the sound of it right in. Um, so this is what I did. I added a gate. Here, we'll kind of go one by one on these. So immediately the gate kind of, it's really nice because if I like accidentally press, you know, something, you, you can't really hear that sound. See if you... You hear those little bits of me pressing the note, you know. So that kind of cleans it up. Okay, so this is a Neve preamp. And this Neve preamp is really great because it adds like mid-range to the sound um, in a really kind of cool way. So you see it was kind of spiky here. And now it's it's got a little bit more presence in the mid-range. And now here I'm adding some saturation. You can hear a bit of a volume bump. Again, a little bit more saturation with this uh, New York. These are a tube kind of preamps. A, this is a Brit channel and models a, um, like, a, like a Neve console. And then this is to take it back down to the volume it was. So without and with. So it's kind of adding a little bit of character. It's um, obviously the gate is cleaning it up a bit. It's just adding some harmonics. Here's the next one. So I added some treble, some 3.6K, a small cut at 489. That's really it. So this is adds basically just adds a little bit of brightness and a little bit of saturation. And then I added this SSL channel with just a hair of compression. I dipped a little at 300 Hertz. Uh, added a little bit of uh, 900, so if I accentuate that, 
get a little bit of that mid-range back. That's too much. It kind of sounds cloudy. I brought it back. Um, I took out some 6K. It was probably too harsh. So if I boost it, see, I wanted to get rid of that kind of upper nastiness. So it's about there. And that's really it. So a lot of like little things that add up to, oh, and another EQ, I guess, at the end here. So I took out basically the low lows and the high highs, and then I did a big cut at 620. So if I boost instead of cut, you can hear that. It's like honky mid-range. It sounds horrible. So if I go back, it's nice. I mean, on its own, it doesn't sound super glamorous, but... presence cut through the piano speaking of piano so this is the um, the grandeur so you can see I have it a bit soft I have some air lowered the bass lowered the mids um, a little bit of is tape saturation and uh, that's it for that so when I sent this to Rafi he said ah the piano doesn't sound that realistic why don't why don't you send me the MIDI information and I'll send it through this Walker plugin so that's what this is So this is a without processing, with some processing. But I mix the two because I like the grandeur and I like the attack of it. I like the sustain of it. See, it's a little bit longer. Whereas this one, it's very kind of staccato. So with them together, it's really nice. But what I had to do was mute some of the long notes. You're going to hear one here in a second. And it's just going to be the walker you hear. So if I were to unmute this, it gets a little bit phasey if both pianos are going at the same time. So that's why I muted it. And that walker does really sound, it sounds a lot more realistic than the grandeur. Um, it's a plugin that I'm looking to buy maybe shortly. We'll see. Um, but yeah, so back to the grandeur. So, uh, I turn this plug so it sounds kind of cloudy kind of like those horns sounded before I brightened them right so what I did is I added some mid-range and some top end here right took out some mids so already it's a little bit quiet so now you can hear it without processing that beefed it up and then I used the SSL to really brighten it so and then with the walker together I basically compressed the heck out of this because I was trying to lengthen that sustain but together, in mixed context, they really sound good. We'll listen to that. Onto the bubble organ. So this is that IK 
uh, B3X plugin. It's super awesome. You can see my uh, draw bar settings. Of course, I got the most left one all the way on. And uh, I got the Leslie going. If I raise the gain, it's just, it's awesome. So what did I do here? If I turn off all the plugins, honestly, like without any processing, without any processing, it sounds really good. However, it's a little bit too dynamic. So I wanted to kind of tuck it in, got rid of some of the low lows, boosted at 300 Hertz because that's where the bubble lives. Put the the 2A on there because I get a little bit crazy on some parts and I want it to be more, you know, leveled. I know it's not a ton of compression, but it just levels it a little bit. Then I added some more saturation with the Neve and the channel here. Minimal EQ. And then let's see the Lindell. So I added a little bit of saturation, not a ton, but also compression here. See, it's it's at, sitting at 2 dB of compression on auto release. So without plugins, see, it's immediately kind of more in your face, which is okay, but the bubble organ is not like a lead instrument. So here's with plugins. Helps it sit back a little bit. You know, now that I talk of that, that I think of this pluck guitar, I, I don't think I processed it because I use my real amp. I think this is the sound that you I got right from the amp. I don't remember doing a bounce in place on any of these or cooking any of the effects in. Okay, okay so let's, let's talk, talk about, about the kete percussion and the other percussions so this is without any plugins it's a little bit spiky it's a little bit dull sounding like too much dynamics so i actually want to accentuate like we did on the drums those transients and this dbx um really like accentuates that so without with and then I added some just some 1k just to help it poke through the mix and then I just added a tiny bit of 3.2 just again to help it poke through and then this Neve console is really cool because it just adds some saturation, some harmonic character. So without, with, just brings it forward a little bit. So let's listen in the context. I want it to be audible, but not like smacking you in the face. There's a kete there, right? So here's without the plugins. So it sounds fine, but I just added, I wanted it to be more of like a lead instrument, right? So that helped cut a little bit with those boosts and the little bit of compression we did. And then, both the tambourine and the kibasa, I did not process at all. But I will say that I used my Cappy um, channel strip when I recorded them, and I added probably a little bit of, you know, 1K or 2K to the kibasa just to help it have that mid-range presence. And then the tambourine, I don't think I did anything to it. I think I just plugged it straight into my Cappy VP28 and let it rip um, you have to be careful on that preamp and with any preamp in gain staging because you know if you go too hot you'll get too much like saturation so 
it's not the cleanest sound. Like it's definitely reaching that kind of saturation um, level, but it's good. It's a good character. All right, so I'm going to... Okay, let's listen to some, a, a little sneak peek of the vocals. The ri the song is called Pon de Rhythm. I'll let you listen a little bit. enjoyed this tutorial I hope I was able to show you something and you could kind of get into my brain about how I mixed the stuff um, stay tuned for the next video and again thank you for supporting my channel if you haven't please subscribe share these videos tell your friends about the reggae content and I look forward to seeing you on the next one peace we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna, we're gonna,